and we use a material on top of it called buckram or buckram if you're like me and like to pronounce everything incorrectly. <laughs> and hi everyone, my name is Stormy the Potato and today I want to talk more about the materials used to create most fursuits. Fursuit making can be an extremely time consuming complicated process and well I thought it would be fun if we talked more about the material science used to make our imaginative anthropomorphic creatures a visual reality. If you're commissioning a fursuit, you work out a financial deal, you send out your reference sheet, receive progress pics of your suit, and sooner or later you get the fursuit in the mail. But if you're making a fursuit, oh my goodness there's so much more to it. But yeah, before I begin, just remember this video is not about fursuit making, but rather the materials used in fursuit making. So without further ado, let's begin. Fur! Okay, first off, we never, ever, ever, ever use real fur. And you better not use it either. We use fake or faux fur. Basically, most fursuits are made of fur, and without it, the word fursuit would obviously lose its meaning. Or so you would think. Certain scaly and dragon suits are made with very little or no fur. Anyway, the most popular type of fur used in suit making is luxury shag. Luxury shag cannot be stretched or ripped apart as easily as cheaper types of fur, and if you're fur suiting, you really want something that'll hold up and stand the test of time. Sometimes other fur types like meek might be substituted for certain parts of a suit head, like the tongue for instance. Uh. Now let's talk about eyes. Eyes are sometimes painted, other times pre-made eyes are purchased like glass eyes that are used in realistic fursuit heads, but what about tuny fursuit heads? In my case, since my fursuit head has follow me eyes, an optical illusion is created using paint cups. We take the paint cup and then we cut a hole out of it and we use a material on top of it called buckram or buckram if you're like me and like to pronounce everything incorrectly, which is this material that I'm trying to unfold. I really might have to... But you see how it's somewhat see-through? This is the same exact material that's used on my eyes, which is why I can see through them just fine, but they're a little blurry and of course you really can't see my human eyes behind them. Unless you get super, 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 super close. Maybe. I don't know, I still can't see them. <laughs> anyway, Buckram is a stiff, cloth-like material that's usually made of cotton or linen. When I first heard about this stuff, I thought it was something like the material you'd find on a painting canvas. The texture looks kind of similar. It's used on book covers, it strengthens and stiffens clothing, and in the age of fursuit making, it's used to build fursuit eyes. Now there are other types of fursuit eyes like plantus. <laughs> Campus. Now there are other types of fursuit eyes like plastic canvas, uh, sunglasses, electronic eyes, plastic eyes, and several other variants, but buckram is the most common tried and true type. So heads up, because we're going to talk about, well, heads. Because without them, fursuiting and life in general would be a disturbing experience for everyone involved. But yeah, what are heads made of? Faces, which is uh, this thing. A face is basically the skull that forms the fursuit head. And in this example, this is Treble's very first base, so um, it was made many, many months ago. Blah, blah, blah. It was made many months ago, so it's a little dirty. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and it's made of foam. Foam bases, despite being lightweight, are fairly durable and very breathable, which allows for better ventilation, something that's really important if you like to fursuit for extended periods of time. Although, on the flip side, the material, being spongy and porous, is also more prone to absorbing moisture and the icky sweat. But this can be slowed down if you wear a sweat wicking material, such as a balaclava or an Under Armour variant. Foam bases can also sometimes be machine washed, which is great if you're lazy like me. But that doesn't mean you just throw any old fursuit head into the wash and expect it to come out in one piece. Do not throw your fursuit head in the wash without asking your fursuit maker, please and thank you. So we've talked about foam fursuit heads, now let's talk about resin. Resin fursuit heads, although less popular than foam bases, heavier and more fragile in comparison, can be reinforced with better durability with the proper materials and layering. The sculpting and manufacturing process for a resin head is quite different compared to a foam which can be sculpted with some basic tools. Resin bases can only be hand washed for the most part. And while resin heads don't have the same problem with absorbing sweat and moisture like foam bases do, 
They unfortunately have a worse ventilation. They're heavier, which can strain your neck if you're not used to wearing something heavy around your head. And overall, they're just more fragile. Two distinct perks, however, to resin heads are the lower thermal conductivity and the material won't get as dirty as quickly. However, you can't just throw a resin head and expect it to land entirely in one piece. It just might shatter and you would have a bad time. Now, before you click that dislike button, be aware I'm not trying to down or diss people who prefer resin heads over foam. Some people really prefer the stiff, rigid nature of resin bases over the squishy foam material. Maybe it works better towards their persona's overall aesthetic. I've been told that resin is often preferred for realistic suits. Something I think the fandom really needs more of in my opinion. Um, maybe they just like how resin feels over foam. Seeing as foam is squishy, which might be better suited for a toony type persona. And resin heads really tend to do a better job with detailing realistic personas. Bear in mind, I am still learning more about resin heads and I'm definitely up for debating the pros and cons between the two. So if there's something about resin or even foam bases you want to tell me about, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Balaclava. Some fursuit heads are actually lined with this material, which will prevent uh, most moisture and sweat from getting into the actual foam and fur, which is a very good thing. <laughs> However, you still have to wash your head regularly and you should still wear a separate balaclava as an additional safeguard to prevent sweat from ruining your anthropomorphic skull. Plus it does a good job of keeping hair out of your eyes which uh if you've been fursuiting before and you have long hair you probably know all about how annoying that can be. Filling and foam padding. In order to uh, fill up things like your tail or your digigrade legs, you'll need something known as polyfill or foam padding, because without it, your fursuit will look very flabby and two-dimensional, and while that might work in a 2D side-scroller, it ain't gonna do a good job in the real world. Basically, you use the polyfill or the foam to create small, mini pillows. This is a part that goes to uh, Treble's full suit, and as you can tell, I can squish it, I can squeeze it, and this actually goes to one of her legs, which gives her fursuit the pretty great appearance, which makes it really curvy. Now, they also have to be shaped properly, and this is where polyfill might do a better job. Polyfill is a lot squishier, and will do a better job of giving you a rounder, curvier shape. Whereas if you just cut a chunk of foam out, and you put it into a pillow, and then you put it into your fursuit's leg, you might look like an early PlayStation 1 3D model or something. And that would make you look a little boxy. Or a Minecraft character, for instance. Now, polyfill can also be used to fill a tail and your rear end if you want some of that added thick turbiness. And lastly, polyfill is used to create your duct tape dummy, something you will probably need if you ever get a full suit commission. Going back to foam, it's mainly used for the head, the ears, the puppy paws, and the peat. Now, polyfill is typically used in areas with tons of movement, like around your legs or your tail, but not always. Threading. Threading is like the glue or the stitch work that holds your fursuit together. Without it, your fursuit would just fall apart instantaneously. And you can't just use any kind of threading for suit making either. If you use something designed for light use or just the cheapest stuff you can find, it'll rip apart pretty quickly. And that would be very bad if you're at a busy convention and you're fursuiting and hugging people. You could be like, hey there, you want a hug? Hugs. Fursuit rips apart. The end. But you gotta get the tough stuff. In other words, upholstery thread. Upholstery thread should be strong enough that you can take a segment of it and try to break it, but you'll end up hurting yourself before the thing breaks, if it breaks. If you use normal all-purpose thread, it might last you a little while, but it will break away way before upholstered thread does under normal fursuiting usage. Zippers! Something you'll normally find on full suits. Zippers are necessary to enter and exit the body portion of your fursuit. It's best to use a larger zipper, but nothing too obnoxious. You'll want something that's durable, but at the same time can be concealed underneath the fur if you don't want your zipper to be shown. Feet! Or peak material. If you get a full suit made, you might have the option between indoor paws and outdoor paws. Indoor obviously being rated for use in your house and outdoor designed for use on things like concrete or grass. Indoor paws are often covered with fur from top to bottom while outdoor paws use a form of rubber. Basically like what you'd see on rubber floor tiles or the bottom of your shoes. It only makes sense to use the same tried and true material used on the very ones that protect our feet from boiling hot concrete and ants, right? 
especially the red fire ants. I hate those things. They always bite me for some reason. Paw pads. Paw pads are often made from plush, fleece, cotton, vinyl, silicone, but the most common in my experience is fleece and vinyl. In my example, these paws are made from fleece. Fleece is just a good middle balance. It's soft and pretty durable. Vinyl is hard, but very durable, and you can clap with it as an added bonus. Now, mink. Mink is really nice, and it has an awesome little sheen to it. It's really soft too, but also more expensive than fleece. Going back to vinyl, now with vinyl, it can be customized in so many ways with different colors, patterns, textures, and so on. However, vinyl can be very time consuming to work with if you're a suit maker, and as such, you might pay a little more for it versus getting fleece paw pads. Claws. You can find these on some, but not all fursuit paws. Claws can be made of several different types of materials, but the most common I've encountered are fleece and resin. The claws on my paws are made of fleece. Fleece claw material is the softer variant, but also more suspect to getting dirty, and they are a little harder to clean. Uh. Resin claws are hard, and you could sort of click your claws together, like if you're getting impatient or nervous. And if they get dirty, they can be cleaned much more easily than fleece claws. Resin claws, however, are much heavier, and if they get scratched or damaged, well, you might have to get a new one, because they can indeed shatter or break, much like uh, resin bases, if you're not careful. Horns. Now, this is something you won't find on many fursuits. Horns are important to have on fursuits like dragons, uh, ram, goats, and duchies, to name a few. There's more than one way to make horns on a fursuit, and as such, the horns on one fursuit may differ in construction compared to another. In this example, the horns are made of wire and foam. The foam and wire are both cut and shaped to form a curl. The ridges are created with yarn and are finally painted with an acrylic paint then sealed together with Mod Podge, which is a type of glue. Now, this is just one example. Some horns are made from vinyl, fleece, foam, and a variety of other materials. Bikes can also be shaped with these methods as well, but not always. And that's all I've got for this week's video. I do not claim to be a fursuit making expert, so please don't be too hard on me. Um, I did a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of research trying to make this video. Fursuit making is something I'm really saving for a future video because, uh, number one, I am not expert enough, and number two, I am really going to need Treble's help, so in the future, hopefully we'll make it happen. But, yeah, it's the middle of October, I'm burning up and sweating. Can it just get cold already so I can complain about the cold instead of the heat? But, yeah, I love you guys so much. If I missed anything in this video that I should have covered with fursuit materials, please let me know in the comments. But if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Um, again, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't and share it with the other fluffy friendos. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!